Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Plasma. I think I have a problem because I am addicted to this game. I'm having a lot of fun building all kinds of things and today we're going to be building a tank with tank drive. This is something that I've been wanting to build, so let's go ahead and get started. So one thing about the building in this game is that it's extremely powerful. It lets you do so many different things and one thing that I tend to forget is that you can duplicate stuff. So you can actually create something as a single module and then duplicate it. So that's what we're going to be doing today with the tank wheels. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with a cube, shrink it down. We're going to put on a suspension, a shock absorber. We're going to stick it right there. Let's actually take the entire thing, raise it up a little bit. Uh, then we're going to stick another cube on the bottom, shrink it down. Then on that, we're going to stick a motor. And then on the motor, we're going to be putting ourselves a wheel. And let's go ahead and uh, scale that up to maybe 200%. So we're going to get ourselves a nice big wheel. As a matter of fact, let's just go 300%. Why not? 300% wheel on a shock absorber. So I have this entire wheel set up with suspension connected to this cube as the root of the device. But we're just going to leave this floating here for a little bit. Because now we're going to put another cube right here, shrink it down. And this is going to be the side of our tank. The tank tread, so to speak. So we're just going to increase that to be, oh, I don't know, maybe three three meters something like that so the next step we're gonna go ahead and grab this entire uh, module thing that I built this wheel setup and we're gonna go ahead and attach it here and if I middle click it will place and clone the part so now I can go ahead and place more than one so I'm gonna go ahead and place uh, two more over here just like this and then two more over here just like this and there you have it, it's as easy as that to create a tank tread. You can see that the wheels are overlapping. They do have the full collision of a wheel with everything else but themselves. There's no collision with the device that you're building. So that allows you to overlap a bunch of stuff in all kinds of different ways. And it makes it really, really powerful. Uh, but one of the things that we want with this is to rotate these wheels so that they're all pointing down. As a matter of fact, why am I doing this? What I could do instead is just rotate the entire thing like this. Now for the next step, I want to add a couple more wheels on the front and the back, but I want them to be going upwards a little bit. So one thing that I tend to forget about the building in Plasma is just how powerful it is, because it lets you place anything anywhere, scaled anything anywhere, angled anything anywhere. So we're gonna be doing just that. We're just gonna be placing a regular old cube right here, scale it down. We're gonna scale it up, probably about to uh, two meters. I, I'm still figuring it out, I don't know exactly what I want. But now, we can just take this and angle it up 30 degrees. And then on the back, we also just pitch it up 30 degrees, just like that. So you might be able to see where this is going. Uh, we can just go ahead and detach from this cube, pull off one of the wheels that we just built, and we gotta stick it back down, but cloning it and then we're going to do the same thing right here. One right in the middle, and then one right on the end. And let's go ahead and rotate those down. Just like that. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't like the way that the wheels were spaced apart, so we can actually just go ahead and take this and shrink it a tiny bit down, just like that. And there you go, now the wheels are overlapping sort of the way that I wanted to. So now we're just gonna be doing the same thing on this side. Take off the wheel. Place and duplicate. Place and duplicate. And then for the final one, just place it down. And then we just rotate them down. Rotate it down. Rotate it down. And let's uh, shrink that down a little bit as well. So there you go, it's as easy as that to get an entire tank tread ready to go. Now for the next step, we're going to get uh, a, just a cube, just a regular old cube. This is going to be the base of our tank. Uh, we're going to make it, um, I don't know, maybe two and a half meters wide by three and a half. What is the, what is the length here? Three meters in depth, huh? We'll make this one uh, match that. Three meters depth. So now that I have my tank base ready to go, uh, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing as before. We're just gonna grab this entire side of the tank. This is gonna be my left side of the tank. And we can go ahead and place it right in the middle and duplicate. 
So now I can place the right side of the tank super easy peasy. This is just how powerful the building is. So let's go ahead and rotate that into place. Rotate this into place. And there you go. I have full tank treads built and ready to go with this cube right here as the root of my entire device. Let's just go ahead and quickly add some weight. I don't know exactly how much to give it, just some, some kind of mass to make it a nice heavy bottom for the tank. So if I go ahead and activate the device, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> that, that actually looks so beautiful. Man, I love this. And of course, if you want to add some more cubes in the front, it's as easy as before. You stick on a cube, you scale it to how you want it to be. Just like this. Just like this. And then all you gotta do is pitch it upwards to match the angle. So easy, so easy peasy to do. And probably the best way about doing it like this, uh, you don't actually have to use a ramp to get a angled edge to build off of. You can just angle whatever you want. And so then that lets you build on the grid of a flat side of a cube that is angled itself. It's as easy as that to get a base for your tank. All right, so I went ahead with a tank build because I think tank steering is probably one of the easiest things to do. You don't actually have to worry about any steering. It's just powering the motors forward or reverse for left and right side. So let's go ahead and get started putting down a controller. We're gonna need one of those. And see, just to show you, you can build on an angled cube on the grid, super easy peasy. The building in this game is incredibly powerful. So you might have seen one of my live streams where I was building my very first car. I stuck my docking station on a stick like this. And that's just to give me a nice view of everything that's going on. So here we go, if I go ahead and activate this and I get inside the docking station, I can look around and make sure all the wheels are doing exactly as they should. That's the only reason why I have it on a stick for now. But in the future, I'll be putting my docking station on the inside, probably with a screen for me to see what's going on on the outside. So a camera on the outside as well. And of course, a, a, a turret to shoot things, because it's a tank. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on the programming of tank steering. So one thing to keep in mind when you're programming your tank steering is just to keep in mind which motors are on the left side and which motors are on the right side. But because of the way that I built my tank treads, remember I duplicated the entire left side onto the right side. So all of the motors are labeled motor, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4, motor 5, all the way up to, what is it, motor 9? So 1 through 9 is my left side, and then motors 10 through 18, that is the right side. So that's just something to keep in mind to uh, make the programming a little bit simpler. All right, let's get started. Uh, so we're going to need the docking station right here. Bada bing, bada boom. And we're going to be working with forward, back, left, and right. And these are going to be going into our motors. Uh, so here we got motor, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4, Motor 5, motor, motor, motor 6, 7, 8, and 9. And this is just the left side of my tank. I have so many motors on this thing. <laughs> it's really my fault for putting so many motors. Let me just go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there I have my left side of my tank and my right side of my tank motors ready to spin. Uh, one of the first things that I want to do is probably just invert the left side. I think the motors uh, spin clockwise for forward and counterclockwise for reverse. So that's something to keep in mind, just the left side of your tank needs to be inverted from the right side of the tank to make sure that the forward direction is actually forward. So next, we're going to set what these values actually do when I press WASD. So when the forward button's pressed, I want to send out a value of 500. When it is released, I send out a value of 0. Backwards is going to be negative 500. And when backwards is released, also send out a 0. So we can actually hook up all four of these into the target speed of the motors. But doing that for all the motors is going to take a really long time. So I think instead what I'm going to do is use a math expression. That's in my favorites because I use a lot of math expressions. So what we're going to be doing with this is every tick we're going to be evaluating a math expression. And this is going to be V1 plus V2. So we're going to do forward, press and release into V1, and backwards into V2. So with those connections in the math expression, 
uh, we're just going to be adding the forward button and the backwards button together. So they're either going to be 0 or 500 or negative 500. But this allows much fewer connections uh, because I have so many motors. I only have to do one connection each and that definitely helps my sanity. So let's go ahead and hop out of this, activate our tank, hop into the driver's seat and give it a test drive. Uh, just for the two just for the two wheels on the left and right side there. So pressing forward spins the wheels forward, pressing reverse spins the wheels in reverse. Nice. Already got it easy peasy working. Next, let's work on the left and right steering. So when the left button is pressed, we want to spin 500 forward for the left button. And when it's released, spin zero. When the right button is pressed, I'm gonna go negative 500. And when the right button is released, we're just gonna leave it at zero. So very similar setup to before. We're gonna get a math expression evaluated every single tick. And then we're gonna hook up the left button to V1 and the right button to V2. Oops, not that one. So this is working exactly as before. And if I were to hook up this math expression directly to the motors, it would function exactly like forward and reverse. Both of the motors would spin forward or both of them would spin in reverse, depending on which button I press, left or right. So right now the left button is effectively the same thing as the forward button, and the right button is effectively the same thing as the backwards button. So I need to change that to be uh, unique to the left and the right side. So I'm actually gonna be using two more math expressions right here and right here. And we're gonna be evaluating those every single tick. Let's just go ahead and uh, move things around a little bit so that uh, I can see a little bit better, wire things a little bit better. So on the top, I have forward and reverse. And on the bottom here, I have the left and right turn. So for the left side, I'm gonna be putting the forward and reverse controls into V1. And the turning controls are gonna go into V2. And what I'm gonna be doing here is just do V1 minus V2. So when I press the left button, it's going to end up being negative 500. And when you're adding it together like this, you have the full WASD controls ready to be wired up into every motor. But before I do that, I'm just gonna add it to just one for now, uh, just to make sure that I've got it right. And for the right side, we're gonna add the forward and reverse to V1 and the turning controls into V2. And we're not going to touch this. We're gonna leave V2 as positive. And that's going to be the right side tank controls, just like that. So I hook it up to one motor each for now. Let's go ahead and uh, test it out and see if I got it right. Hop into the seat. All right, so forward and reverse work exactly like they should. Left and right work exactly like they should. And of course you can't press combinations of buttons that are opposite or else they cancel each other out. So it works exactly like you would expect. Super easy to set up tank controls. Uh, let's go ahead and set up the rest of it. And there you go, I've got my math expression for the left side connected to all my motors, and the right side math expression is connected to all the right side motors. So let's go ahead and check out the finished product. Left side, right side, all the tank treads are working exactly as expected forward, reverse, it's working, oh boy, a little bit too effectively. <laughs> and I would like to see this tank in action a little bit better, so let's go ahead and uh, modify this a little bit to change my seat position. That's another thing that I love about this game is that you can really just uh, change things on the fly without breaking your entire creation. So we're just gonna add a cube out this way, a little uh, beam little rod and we're gonna do the same thing right here just like that and now I can rip off this seat and place it back on here without destroying all the programming that I just did there you go there you go and like that when I get into the docking seat now I can get a good view of my tank and see exactly what it's doing oh boy my engines might be a little bit too fast but hey look at that it's a working tank working tank treads Oh, it's working beautifully. You can see the wave. <laughs> you can see the wave go through all the wheels and shock absorbers.
Look at that. Beautiful working tank treads. Another thing that makes the building in Plasma super, super powerful. Let's say that you have a mostly finished build like this, but then you change your mind. One thing that you can do without having to worry a whole lot is just go ahead and scale stuff. So let's set this to three and a half meters. Three and a half meters. And that changes the spacing on all of my wheels evenly. It's, it's, it's beautiful the way that it works. Just like that, it's super easy to get a longer wheelbase. Of course, changing the width is just as easy. There we go. Now I'm not I'm not popping wheelies so much. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let's go ahead and uh, drive up the mountain here. <laughs> yes. Uh oh. I just love looking at uh, the shock absorbers and like the wheels. Just a wave propagating through my tank treads like that. It looks so good. Oh, the building in this game is so powerful. I'm having so much fun. And I find it amazing just how easy it is. I didn't have to individually place all those shock absorbers and engines. I just duplicated it. And once I got one side the way that I wanted it, I duplicated it again. It made it so easy. Oh my goodness. And then the programming. Being able to use the math expressions and visual programming like this, oh my god. I got the entire left side tank treads just in a single math expression with one connection to each motor. Alright folks, well this is just part one of this video. This is the start of my tank build. Uh, next video, I'm going to be putting the docking station on the inside, covering it all up, and I'm going to be working on the aesthetics of my tank. Also give it a turret and a gun and all that stuff. It's going to be super cool, and if you saw my live stream, I have this thing that I was working on where it's a touch screen that's going to be on the inside and you can actually just touch the screen to position the camera. See like what's that thing over there? It's that turret thing over there. So from the inside of the tank you'll be able to see what's on the outside, position the camera and fire. But that's going to be it for today's plasma video. If you guys have any questions, comments or pro tips for programming, maybe I missed something or could have done something a little bit different. You guys let me know down in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe for some more plasma videos. But that's it for today's plasma video, and it wouldn't be a plasma video if I didn't uh, throw something, you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and take this tank build that we just built, and chuck it at the mountain. Oh, it's a lot heavier than I thought. Alright, turret thing, you're gonna be chucked. Pew! That is not where I was pointing. Alright, well... <laughs> But that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.